Well, today I decided I'm going to open up the uh, PTO VFO tone belt by yours truly, KM4YB, to install a uh, relay to um, move it off idle when I go to transmit using the Dowkey. The Dowkey has a uh, double throw, double pull on it. I'm going to use a relay to energize it and then change the capacitor value to move it back on frequency when I'm transmitting. So I figure I'd give a little short video on how this is built and made. It's not a difficult unit. I uh, just share some information to those who want to build their own VFO and you're tired of using rocks on your vintage transmitter. This is the way to go. Um, power supply is 100 volts out regulated by a chip. I used to have a vacuum tube and I, it just to me it, my signal integrity is much more uh, a concern for me to have a nice clean and, and the voltage regulation is a secret. So I have a chip regulator. It's a Texas Instrument 786 I believe. And it's 100 volts out. A tube doesn't need to have more than 100 volts on it. I have found that out. Um, so and it's also outboard I could place this and then if I want to work on this I could just disconnect the pigtail that I have there it's an octal plug it's easy to get the tube sockets and the plug and, uh, and it's easy to work on it in safety I have the bottom off of it I'm going to show you the insides of this in this uh, coil is a hollow, a hollow tube bored out, and this rod that goes it's inserted inside the tube is filled with a piece of aluminum quarter inch tubing that's counterboard on the end of this shaft here, and the shaft is on a quarter by twenty thread. With the spring load to take any backlash out and you can hear how fine this adjustment is with this coil for the quick band spread i have this hammerlin 10 picofarad capacitor that i can move very fast within the band and then in the front there, if you can see it, is an RFD glass trimmer capacitor to set the band spread. When I put the case over, and I need to readjust it after you got everything adjusted. You need to have something that you can, once it's together, you can adjust and set your band spread. The circuit's a cold pit. It's basically, I ripped it off a heat kit VF1 without the big tank coil. I just used plate choke on there. It's uh, fully regulated, the plate and grid number two. I just use a dropping resistor on grid two. It's working very well. And so I suggest if you build a, your own VFO that you fully regulate. Uh, your power rather than just grid 2 on the heat kit design. So, on the tube, I, instead of the 6AU6, I use a 6BH6. And because I have a bag full of these, I also restore Fisher tuner, Fisher FM tuners. And up until 1961, they use these 6BH6s in the IF chain. And I found by rolling tubes through this unit that the ones that have been burned in through these tuners are the most stable. And of course they sat for 100 volts all those years, burnt in, and it's a very stable VFO. I have bought brand new in the box, you know, NOS box tubes, Sylvania, RCA, and they just move. They go up, they go down, they can't stay put. And if I was patient enough to get them to burn in, then basically it would stabilize. But so, give a demonstration. There, there is my uh,
from the finding used aluminum chassis. Um, this is extruded aluminum chassis. It's five by whatever I needed to cut the length with. It's got very stout material, very stable. Your, ch your VFO needs to be in a very stable fixture and so things don't move. I, the wire went a little oversized. It doesn't hurt to have thick wire. doesn't move around. And there you have it. So today I'm going to put the relay so I don't have to manually switch off from idle to transmit. This little switch here is going away. And um, I thought I, uh, I'd give you insight. It's fun. This is a part of the hobby that so many avenues you can go down and homebrew stuff and get on the air with uh, that I find very rewarding. So that's it. Thanks for watching. 73 KM4YB.